Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I've got a great task to undertake because one of my viewers, Vic in fact, wrote to me and said, if you had 10,000 pounds to spend on a fantasy footwear collection, what would you buy? Now what a great question and what a great opportunity to think about you know, those items, those shoes that I would love to purchase, but actually a lack of funding has always held me back in life because you know, if I'm being honest, the most I've ever spent on a pair of shoes is about 250, 260 pounds. The vast amount of my footwear comes from eBay at a much less price than that, probably 10% of 250 pounds. So to have the opportunity to spend 10,000 pounds on footwear, well, it was a question that I just had to engage upon and I have picked a few pairs of shoes for that price. Okay, right, let's start. Let me tell you first of all, 10,000 pounds equates to about 12,400 US dollars at the time of filming this. So it gives you an idea of where I am. And I'm gonna choose different types of shoes for different elements of my life. But let's be honest, if somebody said spend 10,000 pounds on a pair of shoes, and you're a bit of a shoe aficionado, as I have been all my life, this is my one chance in life to buy a pair of bespoke shoes. Now, of course, for the uninitiated, bespoke mean shoes that are designed specifically for you and alone for you. They're unique. They're only going to fit you in the way that they should do. And for this, you know, you're going to be uh, working with somebody who's an expert craftsperson and they're going to have to make a wooden last of the shape of your foot so that this shoe fits perfectly and it you can choose you can specify anything you like the leather used the color of the leather the the sort of shape of the shoe this is where you your imagination can run absolutely wild because you're the bespoke customer you choose exactly what you want. It's going to fit perfectly. There's probably going to be several fittings to make sure the shoe uh, fits perfectly on its journey from initial conception to the measuring of your foot to the making of the last. There's going to be some, you know, uh, fitting sessions with the shoemaker. Eventually you will end up with this remarkable shoe, ultimately comfortable and very beautiful. So here I am facing this opportunity. Who do I choose to make me these shoes, these bespoke shoes, the one chance in my life that I'm gonna to have to have these shoes made for me from beginning to end? And my initial thought was, you know, some of the big, big brands. George Cleverley from London, uh, John Lobb, Fosters, you know, these, these brands which are ingrained in our memories and our thoughts when we think about the bespoke shoe manufacturing process because they've been around for a long time, many of them over a hundred years. They've also got the Royal Warrant, you know, they've, been make, they've made shoes for kings, queens, emperors, movie stars, and they still do. You know, this is the level of quality they have. However, I've heard some things lately, you know, looking at the shoe forums that perhaps they're some of these traditional brands are not what they used to be. And I decided I'm going to go with somebody a little bit left of centre. The 2019 World Shoemaking Champion is a Swedish gentleman called Daniel Wiegen. And he has a shoe brand called Catella. He's recently embarked upon a solo shoemaking profession because for about 10 years he was um, the head of bespoke shoemaking for Gaziano and Girling. Now Gaziano and Girling, again, British company, they've got a shop in uh, Savile Row, in fact. And they've been emerging as one of the more contemporary, interesting shoe manufacturers of recent years. I mean, they're not traditional. They've recently, in the last sort of 20 years, uh, embarked upon, you know, becoming known as a very well-regarded shoemaker. They make some amazing shoes and they are gonna feature in my list further on. But Daniel Wiegand started with them, uh, you know, and worked his way up the ranks to become head of their bespoke shoemaking section. Then, a couple of years ago, after winning the 2019 World Shoemaking Championship, he set off on his own and now makes bespoke shoes for the very best clients from all over the world. And I really like that story. The fact that this is a man who will make the shoes pretty much from beginning to end. It's him who you know, makes the last of your foot. It's him who will discuss with you what you want and then will manufacture the shoe 
by hand. Now, of all the choices of shoes out there, I've gone for something which I've seen that Daniel Wiegand has made before. Beautiful. It's an austerity brogue. Now, an austerity brogue is like a brogue, but it doesn't feature any of the actual holes, the broguing. And I like it because there's a lot of interest in this shoe. It's beautiful to behold. There's a lot of sleek classical lines involved here, but also because it's you know quite sheer surfaces, you can get a magnificent shine on it. It looks fantastic. And I would be choosing something in a burgundy color, something with tones of red, because I just think they work so well with so many different items of clothing. Whether you're wearing a charcoal gray suit, a navy suit, burgundy just goes with everything so beautifully. And I just like the sleek lines that Daniel incorporates into his footwear. I would be choosing something of a squared off toe because I think for me, when I see a slightly squared toe, it implies bespoke manufacture and something which is quite contemporary, a little bit Art Deco. I really like it. And I know he's made these before very beautifully indeed. All of the details can be here, the fiddle back waist, the beautiful soles, everything you want, you can choose. But as ever, bespoke shoemaking is not an inexpensive process. So at the moment, Daniel Wiegand shoes are available for £3,600 plus VAT. So you add 20% on that if you live in the UK or wherever else you live in the world. And if this is your sole pair, you're going to have to pay £500 for the last to be manufactured the shape of your foot, the model of your foot. So all in all, realistically, this is £5,000 worth of shoe here. And it's something which, you know, you will wear for the rest of your life. It will be beautiful. Let's be honest, it's a work of art. And what a conversation opener. You know, when somebody says, wow, those are beautiful shoes. You know, your opening line will be, well, of course, they were made by, you know, the world shoe champion of 2019. And, you know, this is a work of art that you can wear every day. They're going to look magnificent. They're going to boost your self-esteem. They're going to open conversations with others and they're going to fit you like no other pair of shoes have ever fitted you in your life. Okay, now I've blown half the budget on the first shoe, so I'm needing to go a little bit more modest in price. And on uh, my next selection, Crockett & Jones. Now it's a British company again. Most of everything I'm talking about today is gonna to be British because that's where, you know, shoemaking for gentlemen really is, it's the epicenter of the world here. Northamptonshire, London, other places like that. I believe Daniel Wiegan, I just spoke about, based in the Northamptonshire area as well. Crockett & Jones, certainly based in Northamptonshire, and they are a shoe manufacturer who hold, I think, quite a vaulted status. You know, they, their shoe prices are not outrageous. The shoes I've selected today are actually chucker boots, and they're gonna set you back, let me tell you, 510 pounds. So whilst still very expensive, nothing like, you know, 10% really, the price of what we've just talked about, because this is, a mass-produced pair of chucker boots, and I'm choosing the Tetbury chucker boots. It's quite sleek. There's not any ostentatiousness here. There's no embellishments to the boot. It's a simple uh, two-hole laced chucker boot. And although they come in different materials, you can have black calf, you can have suede, I've opted for their dark brown because this is going to be my utility boot in this collection. I've talked about my elite selection with Daniel Wiegand. This is my utility selection, my casual shoe or boot, because the chucker boot is something which you can wear with denim jeans, you can wear with chinos, you can even, at a pinch, press them into service if you're wearing a suit. And with this dark brown color, again, a very versatile color. It's something you can wear, you know, in any number of situations with any number of different colored items that you're wearing. Today I'm wearing, you know, a tweed jacket, um, a pair of, as you can see, sort of uh, khaki chinos. This would be the perfect attire to wear these Tetbury chucker boots. Now, they come with a day-night sole, which is important for me because I live in the United Kingdom, a country which has all four seasons and quite a lot of rain. So leather, whilst in my elite shoe, is perfect. But for my day-to-day -day shoe, I want something which can take on the elements. So a day-night sole is just right. It's not big and chunky. It's not a commando sole, which is blatantly obvious. The day-night sole is still ultimately wearable 
in all types of situations. And I love the Tetbury because of its simple nature. Its design is classic. It's got that slightly squared toe that I rather like. And of course, it was the boot of choice that James Bond, Daniel Craig wore in the film Skyfall. In fact, he chose a black pair but I would rather love these. I think they would look beautiful, get better over time. Crockett and Jones are a tried and trusted manufacturer. And yeah, 510 pounds. Tetbury Chuckaboot by Crockett and Jones is my second choice. Okay, moving along now, I'm gonna choose a business shoe because whilst the two pairs of shoes I've just selected are quite universally wearable because of the colors, the burgundy and the dark brown, I need to go black because black shoes are the things which you know you wear could wear with anything to a funeral to a wedding to a court appearance to a big business meeting it's the shoe which every man has to have in its collection a black shoe and most people will say a black cap to oxford is what you need but not i i think black cap to oxfords are just too austere there's just not enough going on and if i'm spending good money on a pair of shoes i want a pair of shoes which have a little bit of a reflection of my personality so for me i'm choosing a quarter brogue in black in fact i'm going back to the brand which daniel wiegan used to work for gaziano and girling now they're a british company um, they've recently emerged as one of the best shoemakers you know in this country because their designs are a little bit more contemporary than some of the more tried and tested brands and I just rather like their Churchill model quarter brogue now a quarter brogue is just that little bit of broguing over the cap toe just you know that where the delineation between the vamp and the toe cap actually lies it's ever such a small amount of broguing in reality but it is just enough to bring a little punch to the shoes and these are classically elegant there's hardly anything you can say here which would make you dislike them that little bit of broguing adds some interest sets it apart from all those plain black capto oxfords and they are beautiful they're an excellent execution of a very good shoe now the shoe the the brand I've chosen, Gatsyong and Girling, they do this Churchill style and it's in a black calfskin leather it's that beautiful quarter brogue 800 British pounds not a bad little selection will keep you going for the rest of your life. Whenever they wear out, send them back in. They can be factory refurbished for probably quite a modest amount. And this pair of shoes is all that you need. And that cap toe screams out for a mirror shine for you to elevate yourself above the crowd. So 800 pounds for these Churchills by Gaziano and Girling. Now I'm staying with Gaziano and Girling for my next type of shoe. And I'm calling this type my sexy shoe because I've got a business shoe, I've got a utility boot and I've got my elite shoe but I, I'm going to go for something now which is special, which I will wear for very special occasions when I want to look a little bit more avant-garde, where I want to stand apart from the herd. And I'm staying with Gatiano and Girling because they have a, an, a, a part of their shoemaking uh, portfolio called the Optimum and this is a made to order shoe it's not bespoke you don't get a last made of your foot but what you do get is to choose every element of the shoe from scratch so you get to choose you know what uh, what type of shoe you got what style then you can choose what materials it's made of what color of leather you can have it in suede you can have it in different options you get to choose the last so the shape of the shoe itself you get to choose the lining and the color of the lining um, there's lots you can choose here, even the sole. You can have uh, standard leather, you can have fiddleback, you can have um, double oak bark leather and all these sorts of things. It's not inexpensive, mind. it's very expensive. I believe what I'm talking about, this shoe I'm going to pick here, will cost £3,630. So we're up there really at almost bespoke level. However, when you buy with Gatsyong and Girling at this level, the optimum shoe, it's actually constructed by hand by the bespoke team. So when they're not making bespoke shoes, they're making the optimum made to order shoes. So it's all hand sewn. You're getting essentially almost a bespoke shoe just made to order rather than made to your specific size. And the ones I've chosen, uh, this is their Savoy style and in their smoky canyon patinaed leather. Again, you'll see it's 
kind of a burgundy colour, but it has a rich, deep, lustrous leather, and you'll notice it's a semi-brogue in essence. You'll see some broguing on the medallion of the toe cap, you'll see some broguing around the vamp as well. There's a lot of interest going on here, but look at the shape of those toe caps. Look at the way that there's that angular sweep in the middle, which makes this shoe just absolutely stand out from the crowd. And I think you can agree why I'm referring to this as my sexy shoe selection. It's remarkable, it's beautiful. The leather in this particular example is exactly what I would choose. This smoky canyon patina leather, it's just got so much visual interest going on. I think it makes these shoes absolutely gorgeous. Are they worth £3,630? Well, I couldn't afford that, but this is a fantasy shoe collection and this is what I'd choose. And these would be the shoes I wear for those very special occasions. When you get the phone call, you know, from, uh, from sort of Elton John who says, I'm having a party, come on down and, you know, dress to impress. These are the shoes that I'd be wearing because you know you're probably going to be the only guy in the room with a pair of shoes like this and these are going to attract attention. Now, for those of you who are keeping track, I've already blown the budget. At this point, I'm at £9,930 for four pairs of shoes. Uh, I know I've got my elite shoe, I've got my sexy shoe, I've got my business shoe, and I've got my casual shoe. I'm going to extend my budget a little bit because I need a winter boot. I live in a country where it's rather cold quite a bit of the time, and I need a boot which is unstoppable. And for that, I've gone to one of my favourite brands. It's the cheapest one I'll talk about today, actually. It's Cheney. Again, Northamptonshire-based heritage British company who churn out remarkable footwear at, I think, fairly approachable prices. And today, I have gone for their Trafalgar Captoe Derby boot in dark leaf calf leather. This is, as you can see, it looks like a boot you can trample the world under. It costs 475 British pounds. And what you get here is a rather traditional boot. It's got eight eyelets, the top two of which are hooked, so it makes it easier for putting these on and off. And beautiful calf leather, there are other options available, but I've gone for this, what they refer to as their dark leaf uh, color. And there's something about these which just works for me. They are, they are certainly a utility boot. I think they're referred to as urban industrial boot, but it's got a powerful, solid look to it. It's actually made from quite lightweight materials. So even though they look like a right pair of clumpers, actually light on the foot. Uh, and the sole, uh, I believe, you know, is a Vibram sole. So it allows you to walk with confidence on wet, slippery, icy, snowy surfaces. And for £475, you get a, you know, a, a Goodyear welted boot, which can be ultimately repaired time and time and time again. I know this colour leather is just going to get better as time goes on. It's going to get a deep patina. It's going to look beautiful. And this is a pair of boots that you can wear in any situation. Come the zombie apocalypse, right? You know I'm going to run out of the house. I'm going to need to survive in the wilds of the world. This is the boots you want on your feet. You know these are going to trample anything that stands in your way. They're going to last for years and years, and they're just going to look better as time goes on, which of course is important when there's a zombie apocalypse. You've got to look your best as well when you're surviving in such a situation. So those are my choices. Interesting, perhaps, maybe traditional. Uh, an austerity brogue as my elite shoe, um, a semi brogue as my sexy shoe, a quarter brogue as my business shoe, and a chucker boot, which is just sleek and stylish for my utility boot, and my winter boot, a classic Capto Derby in which I can take on anything. So there you go. I've actually gone about £400 over the budget, but I'm sure you'll forgive me. So I hope you've enjoyed this fantasy shoe collection of mine, as much as I enjoy choosing these. Uh, why don't you let me know in the, sh in the show notes below, in the comments, what you would have picked, where you would have differed from my opinion. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click that red button and subscribe. Um, you can support the channel by buying me a coffee or becoming a patron. I actually release additional videos for my Patreons, and actually you'll see their names at the end of the video in my Pantheon of Men's Style. So until the next time, wear your shoes or boots with pride and passion, and I will see you again very soon.